Hello, in this tutorial we are going to be covering creating ground that can move because we've created pipes that are automatically generated based on a frequency and they're moved based on a movement speed that we've set here. As an extra task what you could do is sort of use this as an initial movement speed and an initial spawn frequency and maybe increase it over time but that's just an extra task that'll be just something really really cool. So the, the ground in Flappy Bird is something that just spawns at the bottom and it moves at the same pace as the pipes. So we're gonna be implementing that now. As usual, go to your definitions.hpp and the only definition we actually need in here is one for the file path. So hash define land underscore file path and the location is resources for slash res for slash land.png save that and now once you've done that we want to create a class for our land so just create it in the normal way that you would for your id whether it's visual studio or whether it's xcode or something else so we want a header and a c++ file and i'm going to call this land for xcode just add it to the target for any other id you should be all good to go and in the land.hpp what I'm going to do is get rid of the contents, close all this down so it's just easy to see. Hash pragma once, and we're going to do hash include sml for slash graphics.hpp hash include game.hpp hash. A lot of this is going to feel very familiar because we've already done it in other classes. And we're going to have the same namespace as usual. So for me, it's Sonar. If you're using another namespace, just make sure well you use that one. I'm going to have a class of land. And class should be a lowercase c. Should be a semicolon here. I'm going to have some public methods. First one is going to be a constructor that will take a game data ref just the same way that we've done before. This just allows us to access stuff like the window to draw to. We're going to have a void move land method. It's going to be pretty similar to moving the pipes method. It's going to take a float dt. And then we're going to have a void draw land method float dt. Actually, there's no float dt in here. My bad. Now we're going to have some private variables. First one is going to be game data ref. I'm going to call this underscore data. Again, the same way that we've done it before. We're going to have a vector of sprites now. So this will just contain all of the land objects. And the reason we're going to have multiple land objects is because if we don't, we will just have one. It will go off, then it will come back on, so you won't look very good. So if we have two or three different land objects, while one is on the screen, the other one is resetting back to move onto the screen. So it's just a cool way of essentially doing a form of parallax. Now, if you go to the land.cpp file, in here, we can get, we'll just get rid of all the commas just so it's easy to work with. We want the hash include land.hpp. We need a hash include for definitions. Didn't have to pick it up. Def Initions dot HPP. Now we're going to have a namespace sonar and we're just going to do land land game data ref and this is going to be called data. It's going to automatically assign it to the underscore data and what we're assigning is well data that's been passed in. And we'll be doing some stuff in here. Before we do that, let's just create the other methods, just the template of them. So land, move land, float dt, and finally, there's void land, draw land. So now that we've got that, in the constructor, what we're going to be doing is creating a couple of sprites because we'll have two land sprites, one that's on the screen constantly moving and one that's moving onto the screen and once one's gone off the screen it'll reset and it'll move onto the screen. So we just do ff 
sprite sprites and we will do data assets dot get texture not get font I crash if we try and do that because we haven't loaded anything in and we're trying to get something for the sprite so land my thinking we haven't loaded the land asset into our asset manager that is correct we haven't done that we're going to be doing that after we've coded this class because we'll be doing that where we'll be using the land object which will be in the game state but it's the same process as before so if you want to go ahead and do that now feel free if not just wait and we'll be doing that in a few minutes so sprite 2 that's it really set the position so sprite dot set position for the x value it's just going to be zero because this one is going to be visible on the screen initially and then for the y position it's going to be at the bottom so we need to do underscore data window dot get size dot y and if we just add the height of the window it'll actually be below the screen due to the origin in sfml so we just need to do minus sprite dot get global bounds dot height like so and we're gonna do something pretty similar for sprite 2 this will change to sprite 2 and for this we just want to move it the, the width of the first sprite so it's essentially touching that other sprite they are both the same side but just in case they're not for whatever reason we will use that particular sprite size so sprite dot get global bounds dot width and for the y position it's going to remain the same last thing is just to push this onto the land sprites vector so push back and we are pushing the sprite we need to do the same for sprite 2 and now we can start moving the land so in here we're going to do for unsigned short int i equals zero while i is less than the land sprites dot size pretty similar to what we've already done for the pipes because it's a very similar process we need to get cal or calculate the movement so float movement going to be equal to the pipe movement speed because we could have a land speed as well but because the land is going to be moving in accordance to the pipes otherwise you'll just look off and skewed we're just going to be using the one speed definition time by gt so we get frame rate independent gameplay we're just going to do underscore land sprites dot at i dot move and for this it's going to be dash movement 0, 0.0 f like so and now we're just going to check very similar to what we did in the pipe class if the land sprite is off the screen to the left then we'll be resetting it so if to save some time we'll just copy and paste this part if the current land sprite that we're dealing with if its position dot x we don't care about the y position if its x position is less than zero minus land sprite dot add dot get global bounds dot width so this because if we just do less than zero remember due to origin as soon as it just the left side touches the left side of the screen it will reset we want it when he actually fully goes off the screen and so why we're factoring in the size as well and if this condition is met we're just going to do sf vector 2f going to call it position and it's going to be constructed with the window dot get size dot x going to be that's for the x position and now for the y position i mean that's for the x position is doing the width so it moves it off the screen and now for the y position we just want the current y position for the land sprite so just do dot at i 
dot get position dot y like so and finally just do land sprites dot at dot set position and for this we just pass in the position vector that we created we could do it all in line in here it's just a little neater this way so it's just easier for us to see what is exactly happening last thing in this class is just to draw it and we'll copy and paste just this for loop here because we're looping over all the land sprites then in here we are going to do underscore data window dot draw and we're going to do underscore land sprites dot at and that is it so now that we've created the land object we need to actually use it so if we go to our game state dot hpp so game state dot hpp we need to do a hash include so hash include land dot hpp and the last thing in this class that we have to do is moaning about something. Ah, include. I did not spell include right, so include. And that should disappear. Fantastic. We're just going to create a land pointer. So land, land, very creative naming. And now if we go to our game state dot cpp, so in here. Just need to load in a asset it's only one and that is land make sure you name it the same thing that you use in your land object right here so once you've got that in here let's close this down we need the land file path so now that we've got that we need to construct the land so land equals new land data like so and now if we go to the update method we need to call the move land method to do that just do land move land dt and finally we need to draw it so land draw land and that is it so we are ready to run this and if it builds successfully, fantastic, we will hopefully get land that moves in accordance to our pipe. So we have some land, we got pipes, like I said if you're seeing any sort of jittery lag or anything like that on my system, that's just because I'm recording as well. So obviously we got the pipes spawning quite frequently, that was just to show you how to easily modify this. I'm going to set it, uh, how do you get? Three, I'll set it to two. I'll set it to two point zero. See what that's like. So if we do two point zero F, so every two seconds, new pipes will spawn. If I run it now, we have a pipe, and it looks pretty darn good. And let's just increase the speed of this. Actually, I'll leave that to you. That's just something easy. Just change this value decrease it, increase it, and it will increase and decrease the speed of the pipes and the land accordingly. At the moment, we've got no gameplay really. The pipes are always spawning at the same height. We'll be covering all of that stuff in our game in future videos. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on my educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. And if you wanna check out the source code, there will be a link with this video to the GitHub page. And as usual, Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.